Hey, what's up you guys? It's Six. Welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be kind of rambly, a little bit slow maybe because it is unscripted, uh, but this week has been insane and I really need to get this video out. So hopefully you guys enjoy kind of this more uh, loose chill just rambly type of video it's not very long either so hopefully we all have a good time here anyways getting into this piece so you guys should recognize this little guy by now um this is the ever famous wash beetle that i have been talking so much about all of the time um in almost any video that's relating to me doing traditional art uh lately anyway um it is my my biggest i wouldn't say failure but like I, I've never really started a piece and then stopped so much as I do when I paint. Um, but this is one of the ones where I was like, I was so confident going into it because I'm usually never confident going into a painting. Um, I'm always, always like, this is gonna go wrong. Um, but the ladybug that I did had me so confident that when it came to going into this piece, I was so confident. And when I realized that that confidence was maybe, uh, a little a little arrogant it was more arrogance than confidence per se um and once i realized that uh that i was really struggling with this piece it kind of sucked all of the joy out of me in wanting to create it again but at the same time every time i saw it i was like i need to finish you we we have unfinished business and this this needs to happen uh and i went in uh about three rounds of gouache on this piece and then let it sit for months before I finally got the idea that, okay, gouache may have defeated me. It may have defeated me in this instance. It is not working for me um, at this point in time, but you know what could possibly work? Colored pencil. Uh, I don't know why exactly I got this idea. I think partially the idea was to primarily use um, watercolor pencils because watercolor pencils are obviously water-based in the same way that gouache is water-based and I was maybe thinking that I could go over top and then add some water and then kind of like get a mixed media type situation going for me um, however when it came time to finally sit down and actually work on the piece I was like you know what would be better is just doing a mix of what other whatever color pencils I have um, and then creating something that's really nice and textured and just really interesting looking, um, which I thought was kind of the right call because, uh, for example, if you look at an actual beetle um, from afar, they might look like their exoskeletons or their wings or whatever you wanna focus on have um, a very like smooth outer shell. However, um, if you actually touch one or if you look really closely at one, they actually have the tiniest little ridges, um, or at least I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. They're just really, really small. You wouldn't notice them if you weren't looking for them. Um, and so I thought that if that is the case, then having some texture like that, um, would add to i guess the kind of realism sort of like a more stylized uh realistic approach and so i thought that was a really good idea and once again i was really confident with the idea going into this piece which i shouldn't have been because i'm also not a colored pencil artist i'm not a gouache artist i'm not a colored pencil artist i'm just a uh, I do whatever artist I think um, but I do primarily tend to use um, alcohol markers if I'm working traditionally with a little bit of watercolor mixed in um, and then you know digital art so I don't usually spread out to other mediums like this as, like for the entirety of a piece I might come in every so often and like add some acrylic to a background or like you know uh use some color pencil to touch up like lines in certain areas or add some subtle shading to certain spots but i don't ever primarily 100 percent use color pencils for a piece because it is hard <laughs> and so i don't usually do that um and even though this piece again did start from gouache and isn't 100 percent color pencil i thought that uh you know doing a primarily colored pencil piece 
would be really fun. Uh, and I was wrong. <laughs> it is really hard. Uh, I, for one, have the worst pencil sharpener in the entire world. Um, it's not a bad pencil sharpener, more so um, I'm bad at sharpening pencils somehow because they always break, always, every time. Uh, and I bought an electric pencil sharpener and then it broke. And then I bought one of those cheap 99 cent, or no, it was a 69 cent pencil sharpener from Target. And as soon as I twisted the pencil, it the pencil sharpener broke. Uh, it literally, the pencil sharpener piece snapped out of the cap for some reason. So I don't know what kind of baby soft pencils they were expecting people to use with those, but that broke. So that was annoying. Um, and then I have like this big red pencil sharpener that my husband gave me and it's for the fattest pencils in the world. Uh, it does not make a sharp point, which sucks. So again, I was stuck with my metal one and that made it really difficult to sharpen. And I've talked about on this channel before how picky I am about having the really like finest point um, pencil tips because that's just how I like to draw and uh, it was really hard to get that with this so that was frustrating and then also my marks just were not going down how I thought they would so feel free to get ready to correct me about a few things um, for one uh, I'm pretty sure that all of the pencils that I was that I was using or most of them uh, the Crayola pencils at least are wax based and then the other ones were water based. I know that I'm using um, a handful of watercolor pencils, that's for certain. Um, but the other, I don't know if Prismacolors are, they might be oil based or water based. Um, those went down fine, but I was really struggling with some of the Crayola pencils and I think that that might have been because I was, the base layer is gouache. Um, I don't know if like the wax of the pencils was just not jiving with um, the gouache, but also at the same time, a few of the Crayola pencils were super vibrant. Like the blue one, for example, was super, super vibrant um, on top of this dark gouache base. So I don't know why some of the pencils were super awesome to use and some of them were really terrible, um, but that made it so that doing things like layering for the darker, um, more shadowy bits in particular, uh, really difficult. Those were really hard to build up and get looking right. But I think the thing that got me the most was the highlight. So I was really struggling with the colors for this beetle because for some reason uh, my base is all brown because I thought that these beetles were brown. But then I, oh, and uh, if I haven't said already, I believe these are a Siamese rhino beetle. Um, so I'm pretty sure those were brown. Uh, however, in looking for a reference again, I find it and it's black. I don't know if there's like a black variant and a brown variant uh, because another fun thing that kept happening during this piece was that my reference disappeared several times. Every single time I went to work on this piece again, I had to find a different reference that was similar enough to the same one that I had before in my mind at least, uh, because every single time I would go to look for the same reference, it would not be there. So that was really uh, you know, stressful made things a lot more difficult um, but it also made color kind of confusing because again I'm looking at this new reference and now the beetle appears to be black and my base is all brown um, so I just kept kind of going at it from a perspective of this beetle is brown but also I wanted to add some color into it I wanted it to be kind of colorful in the same way that I did that ladybug um, how I decided not to go with like realistic colors. I decided to go for like a pink wing and then purplish black rather than just straight up black for the spots and all of the little, you know, leggy bits and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to do something similar. Um, and since it was a really dark color, I was like, well, I can kind of bring color into the highlights with like pink and purple and red and blue and yellow and stuff like that um kind of keep it more on the warm tone side but then like throw in a bit of blue in like the darker areas um for the shadows and stuff like that and again like i mentioned the shadows built up not very well um, but then the lights really built up but also at the same time i couldn't blend them out <laughs> i couldn't get them to um blend seamlessly for some reason. I was just really struggling um, 
with getting them to kind of mesh into each other and I don't know if that is due to me again not having enough experience with color pencils and not having a good enough range of values to get from one value to another but I was really really struggling um, with getting those highlights to uh, appear properly so yeah that was that was interesting um, so after I think I finished the head and then started on the left bottom wing I was like I'm just gonna go for it I'm just gonna scribble all over this piece until I am somewhat satisfied with it because there's no starting over I mean I could paint over it but at this point I'm not gonna do that <laughs> I think that uh, you know this is this is proof that this beetle needs to come to an end he needs to come to fruition one way or another I really need to just make this happen uh, and so I started just scribbling all over randomly all sorts of different colors I was just going ham um, really trying to make this piece appear uh, intentional <laughs> um, you know just kind of kind of look more refined I guess and in in a way it kind of does it, it at least looks more finished than it has for the past several months now um, because I think I started this all the way back in the fall and just never got around to finishing it so yeah I, I, it's time it's time for him to be done so uh, I did my best to kind of again render it uh, pay attention to where certain lights were hitting like especially on the little legs um, nor I almost didn't like add any sort of lighting or shading to those I was gonna leave them just flat but I was like no with how crazy everything is looking right now I definitely need to add some texture to those areas as well um, add some lighting there so that they don't just look unfinished um, and so that's what I did uh, and I think that kind of brought some life back in there um, but at the end of it I still was like this is missing something I don't know what I don't know if it's like the background or if it's just the, the colors the everything so I tried to go in with a little blue colored pencil um, around the outer edges and add kind of like a drop shadow effect almost but then I kind of like circled it around the whole beetle so it just looked like uh kind of like backlighting I guess I don't know if that's the right word um but just the blue on its own wasn't really tying everything together like I wanted it to so I added in some red as well um and then I don't know if I did this before that or after but for some reason it still was not looking right and so my idea was to go in with a black pen and kind of add some more again some more shadow in there and give it kind of a more graphic look but then I stumbled upon my pink um, Faber-Castell pit artist pen and I was like what if I did a pink outline and I don't know what possessed me to do this but I did it and now it's there <laughs> Um, hopefully you guys can see it already uh, at this point in the voiceover, but I, I did it. I'm doing it. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, and yeah, I don't know if that added anything to the piece or not, but that is definitely how it turned out. It's definitely very interesting. I don't know if it's my favorite piece in the world, uh, but it's it's like that. It, I I. I, I really don't know what to say about this piece you guys I honestly am just glad that uh, it was completed in some way shape or form um, it definitely is not a win it's not a win in my book at all whatsoever um, but it was interesting in in multiple different ways it really forced me to experiment with a lot of different things a lot of unfamiliar mediums and subject matters and uh, all sorts of stuff so yeah it was definitely a learning experience if anything definitely not my favorite piece but certainly certainly taught me something so uh, I hope you guys like it also one last thing is I actually decided to be a little silly and varnish this piece with Mod Podge which I don't necessarily know if that was the right call I was really scared to varnish it with anything but the thing is I really wanted to varnish it because um I felt like even after all the color pencil and the outline and everything was completed that it didn't look 
enough. It just didn't look enough. It wasn't graphic enough. It wasn't eye-catching enough. So I was like, if I add like a nice glossy varnish to this piece, uh, it might restore some of those colors. It might make them appear richer and look nicer. Uh, but I don't own varnish. But I do own Mod Podge. And what scared me about Mod Podge is that it's water-based, again. <laughs> much like gouache is water-based uh, but i googled it and it said that you can varnish uh, a gouache piece with mod podge and so i did but i used the worst brush in the entire world ever for it on uh, those really awful like sheddy brushes and honestly i think if i had a bigger softer smoother brush that this would have been fine um but you can see every brush stroke but anyway yeah that is it for this piece you guys it was definitely like i said very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me desperately trying to uh, pull this all together. Let me know what other weird mediums you guys want to try next. Uh, anyway, that is it for me, you guys. I love y'all so, so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.